Regular viewers may recognize this as Grandpa's Sweater Oatmeal Stout from Barn Hammer Brewing in Winnipeg. This is a rich, a robust, smooth Irish style oatmeal stout. One of my favorites from the local breweries. And today I've got the usual whole pile of mail, including a couple of things that you guys sent in to me. We'll save those for, uh, for the end and, well, let's start with this one. It says Tattoo Accessories Brush. That doesn't sound like anything that I would order. What do we got here? Oh, now I remember. Get out. These are little brushes for cleaning out an airbrush. Um, I wonder where mine went. Uh, it's over there somewhere in the pile. Uh, it's got five different sizes. They're, yeah, they're not too stiff, but uh, I think they would get into the various little nooks and crannies and orifices of the airbrush. Um, I guess tattoo guys use these too, but that's not why I got them. I got them to clean my airbrush. This airbrush here, Badger 155 Anthem type, and there are various little places in here that you need to get into to clean the thing out after you've painted. I wonder if that small one will go into that nozzle, which I keep dropping. Yeah, it looks like it will go in there. I don't think it'll go right through. I might need a needle or something to get through there. But let's open that up, and that guy will go in there. Yeah, well, maybe one of the smaller ones. Yeah, they'll get in there. Clean the paint out. Okay, I think that will uh, work quite nicely. Five pieces tattoo airbrush, airbrush, spray gun tip cleaning set, tool clean brush VR, no V seven R eight, whatever that means. Uh, from Alba Coco, um, currently selling for dollar forty-four Canadian. I paid exactly one dollar Canadian when I bought them many, many months ago. Next in, mother to father coupler. It says. I don't want to speculate on how the hell that translation works. It is nice and rattly though. Oh, okay. It looks like crimp connectors. Let's get this. So what do we have here? We have some... Ah. Yeah, get out. Some male speed connectors. Some male of that kind. Um, mini speed, I guess. And the females to go with it. Uh, we have some medium and the females to go with it. And I assume that's, yeah, the female ones to go with that. Okay. And then there's some little, oh, those feel kind of silicone-y booty kind of thing. And they slide down over, I guess you slide that onto the wire and then crimp it and then slide that up over there. Okay. That's kind of neat, and there's some that go on the female crimps as well. Well, that, ah, these are slippery little buggers. There, like that, only facing the other direction. All right. Well, that looks like a handy little assortment. Now, I ordered this a while ago when I was making a repair on my clothes dryer and discovered that I'd only had like one or two little ones left, so figured, what the hell, grab an assortment. Wire terminals assorted, insulated, spade set connectors, crimp electrical, M8T7. Got these from Excel Buying, um, and they are currently selling this assortment for $8.02 Canadian, or five seventy two American. Back months ago when I bought it, it was $5.64. So this assortment includes 2.8 millimeter, 
30 pieces each male and female, 4.8 millimeter, 30 pieces each male and female, and 6.3 millimeter, again, 30 pieces male and female, plus 30 pieces sheath for a total of 270 pieces in a kit that looks very much like that. Only this one's better organized. All right, the next thing is one tuner. Hmm. Oh, this looks like an acoustic guitar pickup. A bit of Velcro. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. An ED20 is a practical electronic pickup which beginners can use electric guitar for a simple attachment without any modification or damage. When you don't play it, you can separate the electronic cord and keep it away from the body. So we have a little piezoelectric um, transducer element there and a quarter inch jack on what do we got here about 30 or so uh centimeters of cable i'm assuming that that is a little self-adhesive sticker thing there yes it is okay and that is sticky back velcro on one side and not sticky on the other side okay so um Piezoelectric uh, elements can be used for a couple of different things. They can be used to as a sound pickup or as a crappy speaker. Um, it's a sort of a crystalline uh, structure that if you put electrical energy into it, it will vibrate mechanically. Or if you vibrate it mechanically, it will put out electrical signal. Um, if that vibration is nice and gentle, like the sound of a, of a guitar that it's attached to, then it will make a reasonable microphone. But if you whack a piezo, the correct kind of piezoelectric element really hard, you will get a really sharp spike of voltage. And that's what that little push button clicky igniter sparker thing on your barbecue and your gas barbecue is. It's pretty much the same technology, just slightly different shape. Acoustic piezo contact microphone pickup for guitar, violin, mandolin, or ukulele. This one came from Sis Manor-7. Uh, they are currently selling it for 805 American or 1129 Canadian. Um, back in February when I bought it, it cost me $4.19. Uh, directly bonded to the instrument panel. 3M durable plastic will not hurt the piano. It can be removed at any time and then paste to use. Without power, yeah, it doesn't need a battery or anything. No retail box. Actually, it was in a in a blister pack, which is surprising. Um, applies to various types of guitars, yeah. Posted in different parts of the instrument will have different pickup effect. Yes, it will. They happen to show it in the picture here on a ukulele. And that's interesting that they've got it uh, set up like that. So the Velcro just stuck on there and uh, and holding the jack. The uh, This little bit on the jack here looks like it's actually designed to go around the end pin or the strap button on the end of the instrument if you have one. That probably works reasonably well too. Hmm. So I guess I better test this thing out and see if it works. But unfortunately, my acoustic guitar won't fit on here. So I had to uh, go and grab the ukulele. I think I can just stick that on there with... I don't want to use up that uh, sticky that's on there. So I'm just going to tape it on all ugly like with a little bit of painter's tape here. It's not pretty, but as long as it's in direct contact, it should do the job. So uh, a week or so ago, um, Gadget Reboot was showing off uh, his uh, some of his guitar stuff and... Uh, I noticed that he had one of them fancy Mesa Boogie amp, or, uh, amps and an orange amp. Well, I've got a Marshall. So there, man. Let's see what happens. Turn that on at full tilt. Actually, there's without. Ooh, feedback even. Cool. Okay, I'm going to take this over here and uh, put that into overdrive.
Oh, that is, sorry about that. That is super sensitive. So you can tell that that is picking up the sound and it's sounding a little bit thin as piezo pickups tend to do. And it's not making that great a contact, but when it does make good contact, Turn that down and turn it into. Huh. And you get a genuine guitar feedback squeal, too. Interesting. Okay, next in we have expansion board module because, of course, we do. Oh, ho, ho, I've been waiting for this. This is a do-it-yourself light bulb kit. Complete with schmoo and schmigma in there. Okay. So you got the base with some thin wires pre-soldered on. We have the clear top globe top. And we have a circuit board and some components. And I knew that it didn't come with the LEDs. Um, that's not really a big problem. I have plenty of LEDs in stock. Uh, negative is there. LED, LED. Okay, so those two LEDs are in parallel. Okay, so it's a bunch of series parallel strings. Okay, so two in parallel and whatever number in series. Okay. And judging by the circuit board, the power supply here is a capacitor dropper. There's a big capacitor, a 200k resistor, four diodes, another capacitor, another uh, out to the LEDs there, another resistor there. Yeah, and that looks very much like just a standard capacitor dropper kind of a thing. So that should be fun to throw together and potentially dangerous. New energy-saving 38 LEDs lamp DIY kits electronic suite 1CA. I got this one from Good Module, somebody I've bought from many times in the past. I paid the current price, $2.05 Canadian, uh, for this thing back when I bought it in, was it February or something? Uh, however, they clearly aren't really interested in selling these to North America right now because of the $39 shipping. Obviously, I paid free shipping, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. Looks like right now everybody that's promoting themselves as selling this thing has it for huge shipping prices too. Oh well. 100% brand new high quality 38 LEDs. Please note beads are not included. For some reason, they translate beads as LEDs. I don't know either. Uh, 2.4 watts, uh, it'll run anywhere between 85 and 227 volts AC. Hmm, huh. okay. Um, luminous flux, 170 to 210 lumens. That's a bold claim considering that they don't include the LEDs with it and it's going to very much depend on what LEDs you put in it. Uh, milky white lampshade, nope, it's clear. Uh, it claims to be flame retardant shell, high temperature resistant, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm not expecting any of those things to be true. I don't know, should I just try and set it on fire? Maybe my soldering will just do that anyway. Yeah, at some point in the future, I'll uh, throw this thing together and uh, draw it up and play with it a little bit. That should be fun. Okay, and now the part that I've been waiting for. Uh, the stuff that you guys sent me, and I have absolutely no idea what this is or who it's from or anything else. Just that it showed up in my post office box in the last couple weeks. Um, this one claims to be an expansion board module. Always a popular item. Oh, hello. That looks like a Nano. But is it? Nice yellow header pins. Uh, what does it say in the back of here? Not too much. Oh, let's zoom in and take a look at it. So in the back, it says HW267. Um, got probably a voltage regulator there. A bunch of little resistors and stuff and capacitors. Okay. 
That's and up on here, a reset button and a couple of jumpers, which is not what you'd normally expect to be on a Nano. 8 meg crystal, 32.768K. Is that a resonator? Is that creating some higher frequency than that crystal? Now let's look at the actual chip then and see what that is. CKS 32P103C816. That doesn't ring any bells. CKS. It's a mystery. What do we got for connections here? Ground, ground 3.3, .3, reset, B11, B10, B1, B0, A0 through A7. C15, there's a lot of GPIO on this thing, but I don't know what this is. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research. Well, it appears to be an STM32 uh, microcontroller board. That's, uh, that's interesting. I've got one variant on STM32 that I haven't had a chance to play with yet. So what do we have here? Okay, so 72 megahertz working frequency. It's got an RC oscillator for 8 meg. Yeah, we saw that. And an embedded RC oscillator with 40 kilohertz. 32 kilohertz real-time clock oscillator. Oh, okay. Sleep downtime, 12-bit A to D, uh, 137 fast IO ports. Wow, lots going on here. Oh, this is the one that they call the blue pill. Okay. Uh-huh. For beginners, it might be difficult to use. Well, I guess I've got some, uh, some learning to do because I'm very much a beginner in this kind of stuff. Um, Arduino is about as deep as I've gotten only because the... Arduino IDE and the infrastructure built around it is designed to hold your hand. Um, I haven't gone off the deep end into this stuff yet. But basically, it is small and it is powerful. Oh, and I can use the, the Arduino IDE. Okay, so I don't have to learn another a different, more powerful, more complex IDE and figure this thing out at the same time. Okay, cool. Uh, those jumpers on there are boot options. Okay. And there is all the different functions that can be on these various inputs and outputs. Nine analog to digital converters. Lots of digital I.O. that you can choose to use. Oh, yeah, it's got a built-in RTC, it said. Right. Wow, there's a lot of learning to be done on this thing. I will get to it eventually. Thank you very much for sending it to me. And lastly, I got another thing. This actually showed up much more recently in my in my mailbox, and it is a light bulb. It is one of those corn cob style light bulbs, I think they call them. Okay, if we're going to do this, we might as well do it. Pretend that we're doing it properly here. So Warm white, cool white, some bizarre color. What do you think? Cool white. Okay. What does this say? Power factor 0.58, so it's obviously a capacitive dropper. 2.3 watts. Okay. That's very low. So 31 milliamps in total. Hmm. That's a fairly glaring, uh, cool white light. It's damn bright, though. There. Does that help? I'm thinking this might, though, have to come apart. Just to see what's in there. Because that is something that I like to do around here. I've actually got another light bulb that I want to take apart. Uh, this, uh, sometime in the near future... This is a Sunbeam light bulb that's been in service since 2016 and ceased functioning uh, quite recently. It was in my son's room. 
So I wouldn't mind going inside this one and just seeing I figure out why it failed. You guys want to come along for the ride on that one too? And yeah, I will definitely take this one apart. Um, just to just to satisfy my curiosity. So there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. And what a neat uh, pile of things this is too. I almost said it, I didn't. Um, so, shipping times. Uh, these are actually this box of crimps, the airbrush cleaning tool, the LED light bulb kit all took 27 days. The guitar pickup took 19 days. And the reason those are still coming in so fast is because I ordered them back in February. They showed up in March, in early March. So before the uh, the plague took over the world too horribly and just shut down all shipping all over the place. Um, I've still got more stuff in stock for uh, the next few mailbags and stuff is starting to trickle in again. So I'm not going to have to shut down this regular feature that apparently you guys really, really like. Um, and I have fun doing it too, so why not? And a special thanks to whoever sent me the, uh, the little light bulb and the blue pill, uh, STM 32. Uh, that is going to take some figuring out. Um, cause I'm sure I've said it many times before, but there's a lot of you guys that are new here too. Uh, I am not a software guy, not by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a hardware guy from way back, like back in tube electronics and analog electronics. So this software and this digital stuff is a little bit of a learning curve for me, but I will get this thing figured out and I will do something with it. And of course I'll show you. And this light bulb is going to get torn down at some point just to see what's inside it. Cause that's what happens. Uh, this one's going to get built at some point and these crimps will no doubt show up in some sort of a project at some point eventually. Uh, yeah, this is all fun. Oh yeah. I'm betting somebody noticed this back here. I don't know what's going on. It doesn't seem to want to connect to my Wi-Fi. maybe one in about 50 power ons. It's connecting to the Wi-Fi. i I'm not quite sure what's going on. Could be my Wi-Fi. could be this thing. I don't know, but something I'm going to have to try and figure out at some point. But in the meantime, it's a mystery. Anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Um, comments and questions down below as usual. Uh, I always like to hear what you guys have to say about this stuff. Um, what else? Oh, of course. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me pay for this stuff and buying me a beer now and again. And thanks to the anonymous donors amongst the viewers like you who sent in these things for, uh, for me to play with and, uh, and ultimately to show to the rest of you guys. Yeah. Thanks for everything. I will talk to you later.